Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Localize. Today we are going to discuss how to get started with Java Spring Boot Internationalization. And so well to get started let's proceed to start string.io and well uh, here we can enter something like I don't know Localize maybe and then let's say i18n Spring Boot also here I'm going to choose Maven, you can choose of course Gradle as well, the language is going to be Java for me, then other settings we can leave those intact. Now let's just hit generate and download uh, this archive. So here is our project and uh, first of all let's open this POM XML file because we should add uh, some dependencies, right? So here in the dependencies section, let's add the following thing. So we are adding this Spring Boot Starter Web because that's a web application. And also we're going to use a time leaf. Oh, well, that's going to be our templating engine. So that's it. Let's install the dependencies and we are good to go. So now we can add uh, translation files. And translation files should be created inside the source directory, then resources, and let's create a new folder. So this folder will be called lang, and inside we should create messages properties like this. So this properties file is going to be like the default translation file and messages is like a base name for our set of translations, right? Let's create some translations inside. So those are translation keys and in blue those are translation values. So those are translations for English and we're going to also create translations for Italian language and those translations should live in a separate file so maybe messages and then the locale code and then properties once again so this locale code should have a proper name also you can add original codes maybe something like enus or maybe frbe or something like that so it's possible as well and here are our translations in Italian. Let's also add application properties file and let's say where our language resources are located. So we're going to say messages, right? Next, well, we can test it out. So here is my Java file that is located in this directory. And so let's modify this file a bit. Uh, so first of all, I should import these two things here. So the resource uh, bundle message source uh, that we're going to heavily utilize in order to translate something and also this locale. Then let's actually modify this main method. So here we should add uh, some uh, new lines. First of all, we are creating resource bundle message source. Just like this, then we are providing the base name. So as we've already discussed, our base name is messages then it's a good idea to set your default encoding and that's how you can actually well translate something so you are using this message source and you say get message and then this get message should actually accept this uh, translation key so that's uh, the name of your translation key that can be found here and then when the application is going to be served uh, so this uh, message source will automatically find uh, the corresponding translation based on the requested locale. In our case, uh, the locale is Italian. So inside the terminal, we should see, well, this welcoming message in Italian, right? So that's how it works. Um, uh, so now I think we can start this application by using the following command. Let's proceed to localhost. Oh, well, of course, you're going to see this uh, error message. It's not a big problem, but what's important is that inside the terminal, you can see this welcoming message in Italian, which means that our translations were properly detected and now they are properly displayed. Now we can introduce 
use a locale resolver. So uh, that's an interface that deals with locale resolution required when localizing web applications to specific locales. So we have a few implementations and we're going to introduce cookie locale resolver. So it's going to resolve a locale that is requested and then it is going to store this locale in a cookie on the user's PC. And when the user visits your website once again, this preferred locale will be fetched from cookie and the website is going to be displayed uh, for, to the user in his or her preferred locale right away, which is actually a good thing. Yeah. So let's configure everything. Let's create a new file, my beans uh, config dot uh, java inside this directory and then let's import all these uh, necessary things so our package uh, then bin configuration well that's obvious uh, then we should import the locale resolver and this cookie resolver also later we are going to use locale and the time zone and now uh, well inside this uh, public class we can create a bin like this it's going to be a locale resolver created in the following way. Inside we should create a cookie locale resolver just like this and then we should actually set the default locale. Well in our case the default locale is English therefore we can say English but obviously you can choose any other locale from the list. You can see there are quite a few available locales and also you can actually set the default time zone. So to set a default time zone, you would write something like that. And finally, you can return this resolver. So as you see, nothing too complex. Uh, so effectively now our application knows how to resolve and how to store those locales inside cookies, but we don't have any functionality to switch the locale. So we don't have a switcher. So we need to create an interceptor beam that is going to well intercept every request that the application receives. And then it should check the locale data parameter on the HTTP request and well if this parameter is found then it is going to use locale resolver and so well let's create another bin inside the same file so let's say it's going to be locale change interceptor inside we should create a new interceptor as you understand just like this nothing too complex and then we should say that our param name is locale data. So that's where the request locale is going to be stored. And then we should just return this interceptor. Nothing too complex, but also don't forget to import uh, the necessary thing here by saying locale change interceptor and now it should work just fine. To make sure that uh, this interceptor actually does uh, its work we should add it to the interceptor registry. So therefore let's open this file once again and let's add these two guys and also let's add this configurer. We will require it as well and now we should say that uh, this class actually implements this configurer so let's say like this okay well then let's create uh, this interceptor by writing this line of code and then we should create yet another public thing like this and it should set this locale change interceptor in the following way and then finally you can create an add interceptors method with the override like this and so we are adding a new interceptor to the registry in the following way. So that's it. That's it uh, for the interceptor. Let's now create a new controller. And let's say hello controller.java. And we're going to import all the necessary things. Now I would like to create a new mapping inside. So we're going to create like a root route that will simply render the hello template in the following way. And now we should create the corresponding view, right? And this view should be created inside the resources templates directory and this view should be called hello.html 
And this view won't be anything complex, really. So here is our view. First of all, make sure to add this so that we can use this uh, thyme leaf properly. And that's how you can actually provide some text and, uh, well, use uh, translations. So here we would like to insert the translation that is stored under the welcome key in the following way. And the same actually applies to this text as well and to these texts. So you can see those are our translations. And here are the buttons that will actually switch the locale by providing the locale data in the following way. So that's how you can switch locale. Awesome. Yeah, actually here I've made a small mistake. It should be a resolver, of course. And now we can restart the application. Let's return to localhost and we can see that the locale switching functionality works properly and this locale is saved to cookies as well. All right, now let's see how to work with uh, pluralization, right? And uh, well, pluralization basically means that you adapt the text based on some count. For example, I have one apple, I have three apples, I have zero apples, etc. So based on the count, the word apple changes accordingly. And of course, different languages have different pluralization rules. So that's quite important as well. All right, let's add a new dependency. We're going to fetch it from GitHub. Therefore, we should also add the repositories uh, section just like this. So that should be a JIT pack. And now let's open my beans config once again, and we should import these two things. This will be used to actually introduce pluralization. And we're going to use this ICU format. That is very popular format used in many technologies that can provide pluralization data. Then we should create a new bean to support this ICU message source. So that's our bean. We can see that we are, we are creating this reloadable resource in the following way. And then once again, we are setting the base name. It should be link messages. Well, okay. And we are returning this message source. And now the question is how do we actually provide the pluralized data? And to achieve that, let's open our translation file and let's add the following contents. So we are saying that it's a plural translation, so that's an ICU message format. And when the count is zero, we are saying simply apples. When the count is one, we say apple, and finally we say apples in like plural format. And the same can be done for Italian, just like this. Of course, you can update this text as you see fit. So that's just a simple text that will be displayed uh, to the user. And now we can display this text uh, inside the template, for example, here. So we're using this plural thing, this key, right? And then we are providing this count. And so based on this count, we should see a different word displayed on the page. So it should be either apples or apple. And if you return here to this page, you can actually see, well, it is displayed properly. Then the same applies to English. Brilliant. And also, let's see how to use a date and time. So we can employ date time format uh, Spring annotation. And so inside the hello controller.java, we can create a new, a new route with a new mapping that says date time. And, and that's how you can actually work with date and time. So we are accepting date. And then we say date time format ISO date. So that's going to be a date in a common format. And our request should look something like this. So the date should be provided in the following ISO format. And the same applies to date time. So it's also an ISO date time format sent in the following way. And we can parse this format properly and simply return it just like this. So we can convert it to string 
Now that's how you can work with date and time. So now let's open this URL and you can see that everything is parsed properly as a string. So these formats are recognized by our application, which is great. And so this is pretty much it. That's how you can get started with uh, Spring Boot internationalization. We have seen how to create a language resources, how to create a beans uh, to, to configure everything. Uh, how to work with date and time and pluralization. And so that's it for today, folks. I thank you for staying with me and see you in other videos.